Hi everyone. I wanted to welcome you to Teaching and Learning Elementary Math, um, EDUC 410, and this is a course um, that you will be involved in this spring. We have a group that will be meeting bright and early at 8 o'clock on Monday morning, and then another group that will be meeting at 2 o'clock on Tuesday afternoons. This is a course that I just love to teach. And I must be honest with you, it's not because necessarily math has always been my very favorite subject, but I have learned to love math and embrace math. Um, math was always a, a subject that I struggled with. Um, I had some really um, not pleasant experiences in school with math, um, but I have now learned to embrace math and feel like... Um, that I am actually a good mathematician and my goal by the end of the course is not to not only to enable you to be able to teach math to your future students but to teach your students to develop a love for math and to teach you to begin to embrace math if you don't also um, or don't already do so. So um, I'm in preparation for next week, since we, we didn't have class this week, I wanted to go through the syllabus with you. I hope that you do notice um, I'm really proud of the fact that the syllabus looks different from what um, you might be um, used to seeing as a syllabus. I've worked hard on this, um, so I'll appreciate feedback that you offer me um, on how this looks and its usefulness. Um, tried to cut out some of the wordiness and make this a little bit more user-friendly. Um, if you can, print it in color. I know it might cost a little bit more, but um, it might make it a little bit more pleasing to look at also. One of the first things I want to point out is that my contact information is up here in the corner. Um, this is my cell number. This is the easiest way to reach me. Very rarely am I in my office, uh, and I don't like answering my office phone, just to tell you the truth. Um, my email address, please make sure that you um, have this in your email address and, and add me as a contact. The same also for my phone. Please add me as a contact into your, um, into your phones. My office is in Peters 143. It is the um, one of two offices right as you start down the hall toward advising, um, and that's where you'll, you'll find me um, on the left-hand side right near the exit sign to go down the steps. Um, office hours, I will have office hours uh, from 11 to 12 uh, following Monday's class and then from, um, and this is a mistake because we'll already be in class at two on Tuesdays. This should be from one to two on Tuesdays and I'll make sure that I um, get that corrected for you. And anytime that you think um, that you need to have a conversation with me, please feel free. I'll make arrangements to be here on campus. I am the cohort leader for the Roanoke City cohort, uh, so I have student teachers in Roanoke City. I am back and forth to Roanoke a lot. Um, days on campus are limited, but um, if you have questions, concerns, or need to talk with me, I will make sure that we arrange some time. So just like all your other more traditional syllabus, one of the things you notice, we have the honor statement. I do take this very seriously. I do expect you to do your own uh, work. I do expect to you, if you use information from someone else's work, to be sure that you uh, indicate that and that citations are made. Um, this is an honor code violation. Um, I have previously taken... Um, reported honor code violations for um, plagiarism, so I don't want to have to do that with anyone. Just keep this in mind um, when you are doing any type of research work for me. Um, academic accommodations, if you have uh, academic accommodations from the DRO, please make sure, please, please, please make sure that you get in touch with me and let's talk about those. Let's uh, get that form signed uh, so that you can um, have those accommodations and have your needs uh, met for this course. Uh, in this class, one of the big things that we're going to be doing is not only learning how to teach mathematics, but how to assess math. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about uh, this idea of um, 
how people's feelings and beliefs about math impact their um, their success in math, uh, how we go about addressing those uh, negative math attitudes. We're going to talk about how we deal with students who are struggling in math and learning um, strategies to uh, help those students. Uh, we will also be looking at and thinking about our national standards in math as well as our um, state standards that apply to, to math. And then we really focus in on those five biggie uh, math concepts, which is operations, which includes addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division as well as geometry, some algebra, measurement, probability, which we group together usually, and statistics. So we're going to be practicing these things. Hopefully, if you have a weakness in a certain area, we'll be reviewing um, those, and we'll talk about teaching those. Sometimes um, your struggling with a concept is actually a benefit for a student because it really makes you want to dive in and figure out how to do it so that you can help others um, be successful with certain math goals. Um, we will be doing um, and thinking a lot about problem solving and how problems are created in math. You will be doing some creation of some problems. We'll, we will also be uh, talking about how we communicate math so that it makes sense and so that it doesn't sound just like a bunch of jumbled words and numbers. Um, making connections in math and connecting math to other fields and, and other areas. Um, and again, talking about demonstrating that we understand um, those areas of um, operations and properties and algebra and geometry and measurement probability and statistics and looking at those within our SOLs and in within the uh, early learning blocks. So um, course materials that you're going to be needing, um, not a lot. You, you might want to have a three ring binder for handouts that perhaps won't fit into your uh, composition book. Uh, you will need a copy of the grade level SOLs and I will have some resources here for you at the end where you can um, easily find those. And I do mean a hard copy, so for whatever grade level that you are in currently in your blocking class, uh, you need to have those particular SOLs for that grade level um, easily accessible and um, in a binder. Um, you also need to have your own collection of um, markers and scissors and tape and things because there are homework assignments that you might need um, those items for. In class um, I provide scissors and markers and tape and glue if we need those things which we will use almost every session um, in class because I'm a firm believer in the hands-on uh, piece but you might want to have your own also. Um, instead of a traditional math textbook we will be or you will be um, purchasing some children's literature to go along with um, our study of mathematics. And the books are in the bookstore. They do have used copies available, which you can also, you know, purchase for a lower price. The nice thing about pu uh, purchasing them through the bookstore, uh, the used copies of the books, is that you're not paying shipping. So I would encourage you to check out um, what they have in the bookstore. Uh, we need my granny, which is one of my favorite. My granny went to market the around the world um, counting book. You will need Grandfather Tang's story. You will need Measuring Penny. You will need Spaghetti and Meatballs. The Grapes of Math, and 100 Hungry Ants. Let's see, get this in the right place so that you can see that, okay? Um, again, I suggest that you check in the bookstore. The other item I forgot to mention up uh, for the course materials 
is a marble composition book. Now, this is what I mean by a marble composition book. It is not one with a spiral binding. If you already have one that has a spiral binding and you would like to use that, that's fine. Um, we are going to use these as our interactive math notebooks. We will be taking our notes in these. We will be adding resources um, and learning how to use these as a student and as a teacher. So um, again, if you don't can't find one with, and mine has duct tape on the binding here, but if you can't find one of these and already have a spiral bound one, that's that's just fine. You just need something to collect your um, your notes in, okay? Um, and just to give you um, an idea, I took that first page, which is something that you could do, and make sure that you put your name on the page and the course number. Um, and then you see all kinds of different things that we will be doing in the notebook. We have a foldable on this particular page. We have notes and drawings and graphics. So it's something that we will use again throughout the whole semester. So those are the course materials. Shouldn't cost a lot. Um, unless you buy all of these books brand new, you probably should end up under $50 in um, materials for the course. So that's a good thing. Um, I do want to make it perfectly clear that the end, if you participate and you're in class and you arrive on time and you stay for the whole class period and you attend all the class meetings, that you should um, expect to receive a higher course grade than individuals that do not. And I think that just makes sense. Um, as far as an attendance policy, the policy is you should be here. You should be in attendance at every class. Um, if you aren't in attendance, um, you can't receive class participation points. And when we go through and talk about course assignments, um, you'll see that one of the biggest categories are points that are given for um, class participation and right here you can see class participation all throughout the semester. Um, this is also part of a professional characteristic and disposition. Um, you're expected to be in class. With that being said, you need to know that I also understand that things will happen, things will come up, illnesses will happen, um, and that if you are going to be absent, one of the first things you need to do is let me know. Uh, and I'm not talking about letting me know after class, but letting me know prior to class um, that you are not going to be in class. That's not coming from another individual, but directly from, from you that you email me um, that you are not going to be in class. And I would like to know the reason why. If you're sick, say you're sick. Um, but that is something that I do require. After two or three times missing, which no one should be missing, we will probably have to convene a meeting with your um, university supervisor and talk with them uh, and see if we can't work on a way to um, improve your attendance. And we will also work on, um, have to figure out how we improve your grade because everybody starts with an A in my classes and it's up to you to maintain that A. Everybody right now has an A beside their name. Um, and I would like to um, keep that for everyone, if at all possible. So let's talk a little bit about course assignments. Um, and most of these due dates are tentative. And I want you to keep in mind that as I see a need or feel a need to change a due date, and I won't make due dates earlier, um, but if I see a need or, or feel a need to make a due date at a later time, then I will, um, I will do so. If you have your work completed and would like to turn it in beforehand, that's fine. But what I find is that especially during this blocking semester, there's a whole lot of things going on, and sometimes we do have to reset due dates. So please note that the due dates that are listed here are tentative due dates. 
So um, one of the first assignments that you will be completing in this first couple of weeks is going to be a math and social studies uh, connection. We work very closely with the social studies class, which um, means that some of our assignments will overlap with the social studies class and especially for the work sample. And this first assignment is that. In this first assignment, we're asking you to look at your classroom and look at things a little mathematically. And we will talk more about that when we have our first um, meeting uh, a week from yesterday or a week from today, depending on which group you're in. Um, another mass social studies connection that will be made will be looking at some data that you have collected from your work sampling unit that I'm sure that by now you've heard a little bit about. Um, and I coordinate that date depending on when you do and collect that assessment data. So there's no date listed there. Probably be sometime toward um, the end of February is, is my guess. Another assignment that you will see um, that is due February um, 19th or 20th, and again this is tentative, is an interview with a child. This is where you will um, interview a child in your classroom that you have either selected or have, have selected with the help of your cooperating teacher. Um, and you're going to talk with them about their math attitudes. How do they feel about math? Why do they like math? What is it that bothers them about math? Um, how does our family view math? Do they use math in their family? Um, and uh, there is a format and guideline for you to follow on this. And then you're going to report out use, doing something a little different. You're going to be using the Edthena tool or the video to share with me um, your reflections on this experience. Um, in March, um, you will be doing another interview uh, with a child. This time you'll be interviewing a child about their problem-solving strategies. And you will be creating the problems based on a piece of children's literature and then asking the student to solve the problems and you will be watching and recording and talking to the child as they are solving the problems and you will share what you have discovered or learned about uh, this child and their problem-solving abilities. Um, in April, our last week of class, you will be um, doing a group presentation that is focused on children's literature with math and global connections. When you start looking at the books that you will be purchasing, you will see that many of them have those global connections. You'll see references to places around the world. Um, and what I really want you to begin to see and understand is the fact that math and connections can be made to anything at any place at any time and also that learning about the world around us can be integrated into anything anytime. Um, you have uh, reflections on um, your math and global education um, will be done the last period of the class and this is a lot for me this is um, this is more for uh, what I want to know about what you learned about making math connections and about the connection between math and your global skills so we'll be talking more about that um, I see one assignment that I think I have missed on here and I, again this is a new format so when I send this to you I will have this other item added and that other item is there is a an assignment that you will be doing in pairs throughout the semester where you will be sharing a um, current event to the class and there's a little format that I have you follow and there's certain places that I have you look for these current events and you are making math connections uh, within those current events. How can I teach math using this current event? Um, and students really um, enjoy this activity and say that it really helps them think about uh, perspectives. And 
uh, our grading scale, of course, you can see is very similar to what you have been experiencing um, for a while now. So there's the grading scale. Um, another reminder that I will do whatever I possibly can to um, stay within this, you know, what I'm saying in this syllabus, but there are times when things may change. One thing that I want you to know is that um, I use a um, website to post the agenda for um, each week. And uh, on that website, I, for in, within the agenda, there are links to videos if we use videos. There's um, visuals if we're doing visuals for our uh, notebooks. So that way, if you do have to be absent, you have information right there at your fingertips. The other thing that I do is post to the course website um, information uh, about the upcoming assignments and I also post the links. Very rarely, very, very rarely do I use D2L. If I use D2L, I use it for um, posting grades and, and that's about it. Uh, all the other information for the course you'll find at this website. So at the bottom of this first page, I have our website here for you. If you're unfamiliar with Google, you're going to be familiar with it by the end of this semester. Um, I also have a link to the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. That's a wonderful place that you might want to go and um, visit and learn from teachers from around the world uh, that um, utilize this site and they have great resources. And then I have a link to SOL standards if you are not familiar with, um, with where the SOL standards can be found. So I want to take you to that course web page, and I suggest that you bookmark this um, once you go there the first time. And if you use Google Chrome, it, it's good because it will help you remember this. Uh, Google is a tool that is being used very... Um, is being used by all of our schools um, in this area and they use this to share uh, planning documents, they use it to share school documents and information with parents um, and students use this on their Chromebooks um, that in many school systems that that they have and if you're working in Montgomery County in fifth grade I believe the fifth graders have uh, Chromebooks in Montgomery County now so I want to show you briefly this website, um, and I, the screen may just be a little off here, but um, you should see Math EDUC 410 at the top, and then down the side you see um, links to various pages. There are some agendas that are left here from last semester. I wouldn't pay a lot of attention to um, what's there yet because um, that, that will be changing, and it will change. Um, dependent upon you and your needs as a learner group and, and what I feel like um, is most important. Some things to look at though would be the course documents because under the course documents you can download and print uh, directions for various assignments. You will also see uh, mass standards and SOLs um, listed here. They are all grouped for you in by um, by the specific math content, so I would consider downloading your SOL from this document here. So all of these are about problem solving, um, all of these are about measurement, all of these are about geometry, and it has all of the grade levels there. So um, I think that would be a good resource for you. Um, then you will find additional math resources and websites. And this is just the beginning to about a bazillion, um, and we will be adding to this particular um, site as we go through the semester. That's just some places to get you started. Uh, here are some apps that you might want to look at and add either to your phone or to your Google Chrome um, browser if you use Google Chrome. And then we're going to go to Semester Overview, and I want to... Um, tell you what you will find here. Um, 
at the semester overview and actually you will already be on the semester overview page and and I'm gonna have uh, that's where I'm gonna have the this video that I'm recording right now but you will find assignments for next week and I know you're thinking oh we haven't even had class yet and we already have assignments well yes because we're on a very scrunched time schedule um, during the semester because unlike traditional semesters that you've been in during blocking you're only in your class for 12 weeks we've already this is week one so we're losing this week so that's why we're hitting the ground running using this video and um, going ahead and getting a few things out of the way that you can do on your own. So I want to talk to you briefly about these assignments. This first assignment is called You by the Numbers and I want you to put it in your um, composition book or in your um, spiral notebook. Please make sure you leave a page for um, the, a title page. And again, we're learning how to use this with students and we're creating a model too. All right. So this assignment says that you are to create an image of you by the numbers in your math notebook. This should have a picture of you and any numbers that are important to you and your life. Represent these numbers in a variety of ways, fractions, decimals, ratios, pictures, Roman numerals, combinations, um, and then you're going to share your image with others um, next week in class. So this is mine, and you can see I drew me. If you have a picture of you you want to cut out and put there, that's just fine. I just sketched me. And then all around this I put these different numbers. Now here's what you will notice. They are just numbers, number sentences or representations of numbers. None of them say, this is my birthday. None of them say, this is how many brothers and sisters I have. I just want you to use numbers and no words, okay? Unless they're number words, like if you had to write out the number 60, which would be my age. But um, I want you to just use numbers and don't identify what those numbers are. Right? Now I've had some people in the past that said they had to write like a cheat sheet so on the back if you want to note what certain numbers are that's okay um, because they said they couldn't remember why they put the number there. But try to choose numbers that are important to you and numbers that you think about when you think about yourself and your family and your life. Right? So that's the first assignment that you have. The other assignment that you have is I want you to watch this short video on something that's called growth mindset and they will tell you what growth mindset is if you haven't heard the term before. And in this video you're going to learn about the difference between growth mindset and fixed mindset. It's about 10 minutes long, shouldn't take too long. Um, and you might want to jot down a few notes. It's not necessary, it's not mandatory, but it might not be a bad idea. Um, because I also want you to uh, visit Edutopia, which is one of the great, the wonderful sites for teachers for professional development. And um, on this site, you're going to see a variety of articles about growth mindset. And I want us to come in with a variety of opinions, so I'm not going to tell you which articles to read. I suggest you scroll down the list and find one that you think is appealing one that interests you, that catches your eye, and read just that one. Take some notes on that one about what you learned, and then be prepared next week. We will be sharing those um, in groups in class. Right? And then the last thing I would like for you to do is to uh, print the standards of learning for math and the foundation blocks, and I've created a document that has all the standards, grades K through 5, um, in the course documents folder that I was showing you earlier. Remember course documents is right over here on the side. So explore the website and go to course documents and see if you can find these documents and download them. Uh, a couple of other things just as reminders. I welcome uh, you bringing your technology to class. Sometimes we'll rely on it. Um, I welcome you having 
uh, the technology available when we have questions and you need to look things up quickly. Um, we will have set times for cell phones um, and we will have set times for technology usage. So um, just keep that in mind as you begin um, thinking about, okay, Monday morning, 8 o'clock, what do I need to bring besides coffee? And Tuesday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Technology is welcome, but we will have set times for when we use technology, including our cell phones. Okay, so keep that in mind. I hope this gives you a pretty good overview of the semester. Um, I am looking forward to seeing you all face to face and have a great weekend. Take care.